Hello. I teach the self-driving car engineer nanodegree program at Udacity, which is a nine-month program that trains software engineers to work on autonomous vehicles. Before I was ever a student at Udacity, or um, an employee at Udacity, I was actually a student, um, I was for many years a normal Silicon Valley web software engineer working in Ruby on Rails. And a few years ago, I got really excited about self-driving cars, but I didn't have any background in robotics or system software or automotive software, so I started taking classes online at Udacity and at other places to learn how to become an autonomous vehicle engineer. I was hired onto the autonomous vehicle team at Ford Motor Company at their research and innovation center in Palo Alto, California. And later, the team at Udacity asked me to come and build out a program for people to do essentially what I had done to learn to become autonomous vehicle engineers. At Udacity, we have our own self-driving car. Her name is Carla. Um, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about how Carla works and how most self-driving cars work through the lens of some of the projects that our students have done as part of the nanodegree program. So I think of self-driving cars as having five core components. Computer vision, sensor fusion, localization, path planning, and control. Computer vision is how we use camera images to figure out what the world around us looks like. And sensor fusion is how we incorporate data from other sensors, like lasers and radar, to get a richer understanding of our environment. Once we've built this deep understanding of what the world around us is, we use localization to figure out precisely where we are in that world. And then once we figured out where we are in the world and what the world looks like, we use path planning to chart a course through the world to get us to where we'd like to go. And then the final step is control, which is how we actually turn the steering wheel and hit the throttle and hit the brake in order to execute the trajectory that we built during path planning. So these are the five core components of self-driving cars, and I'd like to investigate each of them with you. This is computer vision. This is a video that Carla took driving up Highway 280 in Silicon Valley. And this is work that one of our students, Vivek Yadav, did. Vivek is using computer vision, so looking for colors and edges and gradients to find the lane on the road. And then he's trained a deep neural network to draw bounding boxes around the other vehicles on the road. Deep neural networks, or deep learning, is an exciting new part of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And it's a way that computers can learn what cars and other objects look like simply by sending them lots and lots of data. They see lots of cars and they learn what cars look like. And you can see the deep neural network is trying to figure out, is that one car, is that two cars? And as they separate, it sees that it's a couple of cars. And this is pretty similar to what advanced driver assistance systems do on the road today. So once we know what the world looks like through camera images, the next step is to augment that understanding of the world using other sensors, so radar and lasers, to get measurements that are difficult for a camera alone to understand. So things like the distance between us and other cars and how fast other objects in the environment are moving. And what you see here is data from a trip that Carla took up El Camino Real, which is the main commercial street in Silicon Valley. And you see on the right the video feed of what that drive looks like, and the main image here is the laser scan of what the world around Carlo looks like. And you can see this LIDAR, which is an array of lasers, doing a 360 degree scan of the world and seeing what the different objects in that environment look like and how they move. So once we understand both what the world looks like and how to measure it, and we incorporate those understandings together to get a rich picture of our surrounding environment, the next step is to localize ourselves in that environment. And you might think this is really straightforward because we all have cell phones today, they all have GPS in them, we all know where we are all of the time. But in fact, GPS is only accurate to within about one to two meters. And if you think about how big one to two meters is, if a car is wrong about where it is by one to two meters, it could be over here on the sidewalk hitting things. That would be really bad. So we have to use much more sophisticated mathematical algorithms as well as high-definition maps to localize our vehicle precisely in its environment to single-digit centimeter level accuracy. 
So this is work by one of our students. His name is Daniel Lopez Madrid. And what Daniel is doing is he is using a particle filter, which is a really sophisticated type of triangulation. And as his blue vehicle moves through the simulator, it's measuring its distance from various landmarks. And it's figuring out how far it is from these landmarks and where it sees the landmarks and comparing that to the map and using that to figure out precisely where it is in the world. And this is how self-driving cars localize. In the real world, those landmarks might be things like street lights or traffic signs or mailboxes or even manhole covers. So once we've figured out where we are in the world and what the world around us looks like, the next step is to actually chart a path through that world to figure out how to get where we want to go. And this is path planning. Here you can see the work by one of our students, Kazuhiro Nakagawa. And what Kazuhiro has done is in our Udacity Highway Simulator, he's built a path planner that predicts where the other vehicles on the road are going to go, and then figures out what maneuver his vehicle should take in response. And then finally, builds a series of waypoints. Those are those green pearls you see in the video for the car to drive through. That's the trajectory the car should follow. And you see when his vehicle comes up on other traffic, it has to figure out should it slow down and stay in its lane, or should it shift right or shift left. And this is, in fact, the type of decision that real self-driving cars have to make all the time, subject to constraints like speed limits and acceleration limits so the ride is comfortable. And you can imagine this gets much more complicated in urban driving, where there are a lot more intersections and different maneuvers you can make. But in principle, the decisions are all the same. So once we've figured out what the path we want to take through this world is, and we know where we are in the world, and we know what the world looks like, the final step in the pipeline is control. And control is how we actually turn the steering wheel and hit the throttle and hit the brake in order to execute that trajectory that we built during path planning. So this is one of our students, Emmy Lau. Um, this is Udacity's racetrack simulator. And she has a yellow line here. That's the ideal trajectory that her car should follow. And what you see is there's this green line layered on top of the yellow line, and the green line is the trajectory that her vehicle predicts it's going to follow based on the steering wheel and throttle and brake commands that it's sending. And what we'd love is for that green line to be 100% aligned with the yellow line, but of course that's really difficult. And as a human driver, you probably know this. It's really difficult, particularly on tight turns, to follow the exact line through the middle of the lane that you'd like to follow. But you do pretty well with it, you manage to drive, and in fact, computers are really, really good at this, and the distance between the trajectory they'd like to follow and the trajectory they actually follow is really, really close. So that's how self-driving cars work at a high level. Um, we use computer vision and sensor fusion to get this rich picture of where we are in the world. Um, we use localization to nail down precisely our location in that rich world. We use path planning to chart the course through the world to get us where we'd like to go, and we use control to turn the steering wheel and hit the throttle and hit the brake to execute that trajectory and ultimately move the vehicle. Everything else self-driving cars do are essentially more sophisticated implementations of these key functions, and this is how self-driving cars work. It is a really exciting time to work on self-driving cars. Computers are getting better and better at these tasks all of the time, and I hope you see self-driving cars on a road near you soon. My name is David Silver. I teach self-driving cars at Udacity. Thank you very much.